and I'm here with the one, the only, Jim Pinson tomorrow. How are you, Pippin? I'm good. Good. I'm Thanks good. so much for joining us. No problem at all. Um, obviously, this was a year like no other. Mm. Were you really frustrated not being able to gig? Or did you just kind of go with it? And mm, I think that the, the this last little while has been tough because I think that there's just so much around Christmas that I associate with playing shows or watching shows or like, you know, friends of mine doing Christmas shows in like small places in Dublin that you never get to see them. There's just so much to this time of year that I associate with playing music or being around music. So for big parts of the year it was okay because I have a studio and I was doing a lot of work and, and get and it gave me an opportunity to work with people like I did that track with, with Circa and Denise Chyla and, and Which is amazing by the way. Thank you. I wasn't fishing but I appreciate it. Um, that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for this year. So I'm grateful for those things. But live music is it's where my energy goes. Yeah. And I've spent a year now accumulating this weird energy because I can't sing it out into the world. I never thought about that in my life. Yeah. How much I took it for granted. Yeah. And did you find that lockdown affected the creative process overall? Yeah. Yeah. I think that there was good moments and bad moments. I think that there was like a lot of manic energy in the start, just trying to do things like writing songs, like connecting with people, and nothing really came of it because it was all just like wired energy but then during the summer it was actually really great like i say like just a lot of a lot of creativity in ireland that's i i mean i put my hand up I, like I, I live here i've lived my whole, like like majority of my life here but when you kind of reach a certain point in the mu your music career and it becomes international you just start thinking about your hometown differently and you start like spending i make my records in other parts of the world I have a studio here, but it's for writing. It's not, I've never thought about bringing people in. Um, so it's this, like the creativity in Ireland, I know it sounds wildly naive of me to say it, but it just, I just didn't realize how potent it was. You know, I, I'd seen these people anecdotally from afar, like I've known Circa Richardson for like a year or two, actually probably longer than that, but we've been friends for that amount of time. And then I was just like, let's go in the studio. And we made her song, The Starlight Lounge, and it was just like, this is incredible, this person is a genius. And getting to be around that, knowing that that creativity wouldn't exist if it wasn't for this year, this mental year. Mm. And the same with Denise. Um, and putting musicians in rooms that I'd never put in rooms before. Like yeah. the, that Denise's Circus song came from a room that included like, you know, God Knows and Murley, but also like Mark from Codeline, who's one of my best friends. Connor from All Twins, who's another like great friend of mine, a producer called Cormac Butler. No, these are all people that didn't know each other. They just knew me. And I was like, let, let me try and be a connector. So that was brilliant. I absolutely adore that. Good. Getting to do it again now at the moment has been like fantastic. And Amazing. I feel like a normal person. It sounds like you're really organic collaborations, which yes. is nice. Yeah. Um, and did you have like a routine during lockdown? Or mm, no? Well, I have a daughter, I have a two year old daughter. So she has a routine <laughs> and I exist within the parameters of her routine. <laughs> um, <laughs> Like, yeah, I mean, again, a, a kind of a gift. I had expected to be super busy this year and not away, and not here a lot. So getting to kind of see her become a little person. She's genuinely started the year as like a blob, and now she's like this little person that chats nonsense <laughs> to me all day long, and it's amazing. So her routine, and that routine was lovely. Um, that said, I'm excited to not have a routine for a while, because yeah. I'm used to I'm used to my routine being chaos. Like, I've, like, spent 10 years as a recording artist and I've played you know probably 100 150 shows a year wow. and so like my routine I don't know what a routine is yeah like I'm, like I wake up on the tour bus in like North Dakota yeah. and I get out and I'm like oh, here we are <laughs> like so it's yeah. yeah it's it's been a an interesting year from that perspective yeah. trying to find routine or understand what that even means to me at this point in my life very yeah. good I am yeah. Also, your vi official video for Gone came out. It's yeah. so cool. The, it was all gone on one take, wasn't it? Can yeah. you tell us about that? Um, yeah, uh, like a, a really kind of really strange concept. Um, I didn't want to know what happened in the video. So like, rather than do like one take videos have been done a million times. So we're trying to find, I don't like doing things unless I'm kind of covering some new ground. Like that has to be appealing to me on some level. So. Gar O'Rourke, who shot the video, we did a performance, he shot a performance of mine for the Colbert show in a, a, a pub in town, and we did it as a one take. 
and he just nailed it. He brought something back to it where I was like, oh, I remember performing and, and that, that like the potential failure in it. Yeah. <laughs> and I loved it. <clears throat> so I left that thinking, I wish we could make a music video that captured that sort of like fear of failure. So that's how it, it, it sort of organically came from that. We were talking about other videos and it wasn't really coming into focus. So I just woke up one night and was like, what if we shot a video based on a treatment that they sent me, which was like, all these things will happen to James in the video, but it was all quite physical and wasn't really possible in our current yeah. times. So then they were pivoting to something else and I was like, stop, don't, just don't tell me. Just don't tell me. They spent a week rehearsing it and I didn't see any footage. I walked into like an empty room with a camera in the middle and a circle painted on the floor that I had to walk around while staring at the camera. And then this like, we spent three minutes shooting it and that was it. That like, it was the weirdest, weirdest thing. Oh my God. And it's, it's lovely to see everyone like respond to it so well. And also the, we did like a BTS shot by shot of it where you like, we had a camera above us to sort of show how it all unfolded. And honestly, like it, it's almost better than the actual video because what they pulled off was like, crazy I don't know how they did it to this point I'm like how did they not smash into me all these like yeah, dancers yeah. running around me it's genius You're like so it's close with the mirrors and everything as well I'd be so scared too. yeah I couldn't do well, it. what's crazy <laughs> about it is that like I had to walk at a certain pace and if I had walked at a slightly slower pace they I would have they would have been like over there while I was here doing oh. their choreography and no one would have seen it so like but I didn't know what pace I needed I didn't like they told me walk this speed you have to walk this speed but like abstract versus reality, yeah. like what happens? So I was like, keep walking at the same pace, keep yeah. walking at the same so pace. So orchestrated, isn't it? Was it? Mad. Yeah. Wow. it was mad, yeah, it was great, it was I loved it, I'm glad you liked it. Um, and are you excited for Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like I love Christmas so much because I associate Christmas with those moments where I get to be home, like go up to my parents' house and just sit on the couch for four days and watch like nonsense. <laughs> and that's not happening this year, like, I, like it's, that's, that's gonna that's strange you know yeah. so it's yeah I'm not looking forward to it because I associated with so many things and like everyone that's watching this will, will be feeling the exact same way like no yeah. one is like all my friends live in London so no one's coming home so you know January and February will be the months where I get to see people and do things hopefully and uh, that's what I'm kind of holding on to and try and like make the best of it all yeah. you know it's 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 just a weird time, but like, you know, it is what it is. I sound like I'm rambling. It's just, but it's, yeah. <laughs> no, I get you, I get no, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I've never really thought about it. Like, it's just, I realized that Christmas is like next week, like a couple of days ago. It's crazy, isn't and that's, it? I'm usually like the hypest guy. Like I get my tree like months in advance. I just love it. Um, I still have a tree and stuff, but yeah, it's just different. And has your daughter wrote her letter to Santa? <laughs> <laughs> she's definitely getting a lot of stuff. Oh my gosh, she's getting a lot of things. Um, she, it just, that's the cool thing is like she is at an age now where she's like knows what's happening. She knows presents exist, and she's like hype to get them. So that's that's lovely. It wasn't that way last year. So like I'm grateful for that and. Uh, like getting to be in the city centre and kind of experience it like that is cool. So, oh, yeah. And if you had to pick your favourite Christmas song of all time, mm. <laughs> tough question, but <laughs> yeah. what would it be? I'm a big fan of a song. I think it's called Christmas. Excuse me. <clears throat> Every time someone coughs now, it's like, <gasps> <laughs> no. Um, I'm a big fan of a song uh, by Darlene Love called Christmas. I think it's like in brackets, baby, please come home. You know that one? It, like. It was like a, it was like Phil Spector Christmas one. Okay. It's amazing. The reason I love it is because Darlene Love was like um, Murtaugh's wife in uh, Lethal Weapon, the Lethal Weapon oh, movie no series. Way. And I used to love that movie series when I was a kid. So like, I remember someone just telling me like, oh, you know, that's like she sings that song, and it's an amazing song. Um, I love that one. I like the weird ones. I think like the weird like weird ass like the Christopherberg. Oh yeah. Does a Christopherberg have a Christmas song about a spaceman or something? He does, oh, yeah. right? I actually couldn't tell. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. Like, like someone in the uh, traveler came. Traveler, traveler came. came. Yeah, it's yeah. like some weird, or, or like you know, like what's the the Paul McCartney one? That's like all like the janky like synthesizers yeah. and stuff. Like he just didn't. He just found the synthesizer and was like, it was like the birth of it, like synths. It was just. Yeah. I love those ones. I love that they're classics. that come on, and you're like, this song is yeah. weird. Yeah. <laughs> this is so, so weird. Iconic. Yeah. yeah, but um, yeah, it's funny. We every year we talk about Christmas songs. 
because loads of people in the music business are obsessed with trying to get Christmas songs. Yeah. Because obviously they're like, you know, you get Mariah, like Mariah, okay, we forgot to start with Mariah Carey, but obviously <laughs> that's like the icon. Yeah. But like, yeah, it's, a, it's so hard to write a Christmas song. People yeah. think it's easy. And I'm like, this, this seems like difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you so much again. It was so lovely talking Absolute to you. Absolute pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.